Does getting fit feel like a heavy lift? It doesn't have to be, according to today's guest. Monica Mooring is a commodities broker by day and an Olympic weightlifter by night. And what she's going to teach us today is how we can reach for fitness in just five minutes. But before we get into today's workout, Monica, take us to the beginning of your story. How did you get interested in weightlifting and working out? Oh, I've always been active from a young age. I've been in a lot of sports and I've always just liked how it makes me feel, the confidence that it gives me. And I got into Olympic weightlifting because I actually went to a meet that a friend of mine was doing one time. And I thought that looks really cool. I want to do that. So I tried it. Well, and you're also coming from the perspective of sitting in an office chair all day, like many of the people who are watching the show, and you've had your own back pain issues like many of our viewers. So how right. can you be a weightlifter and work out if you have back pain? <laughs> That's a really good question. And after I had my back surgery, I thought maybe I won't even be able to work out again or run or do anything. But actually lifting weights is good for your back if it's done properly and can prevent further injury or prevent any injury at all. So that kind of challenges the belief that we sometimes hold that if we have an injury, we might be permanently sidelined. And what Monica is going to show us today is no matter your fitness level, your level of pain. And in fact, I've got a little lower back pain today, so maybe <laughs> we'll work it out. You can always begin again. A critical component is having a great coach. And that's what I'm hoping you can help with today is to be that fitness coach that we all need that can help us get moving again. And maybe what you've learned to work out your back pain will work for me today as well. So of course, I like to think about this as the five minute fix. I mean, your journey to fitness is as soon as the next choice you make after watching the show or at the end of your day to day. So Monica, what can you show us that anyone at any fitness level could do to just get moving? Okay, we're gonna start with a really quick warm up, just two simple moves. And the first one is called an egg roll. And it's not something you eat. <laughs> it's what you have to do when you eat too many egg rolls, I think, right? That's that, correct. That the key? All right, That's all right. perfect. Okay, so we're going to start on the ground. Okay. And Grab a hold of your knees and bring them to your chest as much as you can and simply just roll backwards, roll slowly. And right back up. I hear. Yeah, let's have you try a couple. Okay, so I need to grab on, you said, just around my shins here? Exactly. Okay. Perfect. And then just roll back. Am I, am I at a yep. good angle here? Yep, get as close as you can. Okay. Wrap so up into a little, a little I'm egg. Give myself a hug here. There oh, you go. Well, we're back on the egg roll. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then just roll back on my spine, right? Right. Nice and, and slow up. and easy. Nice and slow and easy. I hope I make it back up. <laughs> All right. Woo! <laughs> there you Not go. Right. I think I unwrapped the egg roll. I deconstructed my exercise. <laughs> All right. Should we try one more, maybe? One All more right, time. Let's go. see if you can do it. Here's hoping. Perfect. Yeah. Use those abs to get you back up, and you're good to go. So do maybe like five to six of those. And then we'll move on to our next warm up move. All right. All right, for this next one, we're just gonna get a little bit of rotation going. And if you have a chair or a couch, put your hands on the edge and one leg forward and one leg is back. And here's where the rotation part comes in. So it does require a little bit of coordination. You're going to turn towards your up leg and reach your hand toward the ceiling. Exhale here, come back down, inhale and exhale on the reach. Okay, and we'll do four to five on one side and then switch with the other leg and do four to five on that side as well. Okay. And we'll have you try this one too. Now, something that strikes me as I was watching you do that is what it takes to keep your balance. And I think we're all considering in our lives how to find more balance. And is yes. there a secret even in this workout activity where we're moving and trying to find or keep our balance? Right, that's all about the core. That's your stabilization. So this is giving you rotation through your core as well as using that to stabilize your body so you don't fall over. Okay, so bend, you said my left knee here. Right? Correct. All right, and hands, hands on the chair. And then a gentle turn. Yep, exhale as you reach towards the ceiling. Perfect. And then inhale when you're back down. So the breath is an important part of the movement then. Yes, yes, it totally is. 
There you go. That looks great. You know, something I was noticing when I was doing that is it was easier to keep my balance when I was looking all the way to the end of my fingers. And I, I exactly. think about that. How much, right. whether it's in working out or in daily life, do you find that focus is key to balance? Oh, the two go hand in hand. That's, that's exactly right. So yes, follow your movement, whichever way you're moving in, and that's definitely going to help your stabilization. Along with taking a deep breath. Isn't it amazing how quickly you can reset even with one or two deep breaths and refine your balance in a move like what we just did or in a moment sitting at your desk under a high pressure situation? Right, right, exactly. Believe it or yes. not, that's just the warm up. Now we're ready for a little bit of a workout, right? So <laughs> exactly. take us what we would do yes. next. Yes, okay, so our first move is going to be a body weight squat. Okay. And I want you to place your feet about shoulder width apart. You can turn your toes out a little bit if you like, depending right. on. And what I'm gonna have you do first is reach forward with both hands. Okay, I notice your fingers are open. Yes, palms okay. facing each other. So that's just gonna give you a little bit of counterbalance when we go down, so. And you're just gonna squat. Squat down as low as is, as is comfortable. It doesn't matter how low you go, and back up. So one more time. And back up. Now I notice that when I do that, I feel that pain in my lower back. Is that normal? Is that because I'm already sore or am I that, doing something That could wrong? be. <laughs> when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're not leaning so far forward. It's more so just sitting straight down. And if you are getting pain, I would not go as far down. Go okay. only as far down as you feel comfort. Any discomfort, we don't want to go any further than that. Your body is sending you a sign you need to. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> So, and if you want to take this up a notch and get some more cardio into that, we can do, do a jump squat. So we're going this to- This sounds dangerous. I did not <laughs> sign a waiver. Should I have signed a waiver before Yes, we, this? we should have had you do that, but that's all right. So, all right. Okay, so on the way down, we're going to bring our hands together. Okay. And they're going to spring up and right back down into it. Spring up, right back down. There we go. Oh, I got a bonus one in. Does that mean I can eat a cookie when we get done you with can. the workout? Okay, you can. You can. Definitely get a cookie. All right. So that's our first move was the body weight squat. And next move is going to be our elevated push-up, which I'm going to use the chair again. Okay. So I'll have you step behind the mat. And what I appreciate about what you're showing us is that we're not using any special equipment. I mean, just a regular right. chair. And even if you don't have a mat, you can just do this on your carpet. Right, right, exactly. You don't need any equipment to do these moves and you can go through it in a quick five minutes, super simple. And there's ways to, there's different variations as well. So depending on your fitness level, you can adjust it accordingly. So that's why I like doing an elevated push-up rather than doing it on the ground. Most everybody can do some sort of elevated push-up. Even if you want to go against your wall and do a push-up, that's fine too. So we're going to use the chair since it's okay. here. And put your, hairs, uh, your hands on the edge of the chair. Okay. And push long into the chair so I don't want to see any sort of movement like that. And feet probably about shoulder width apart. And then I want you to go down slowly. You don't have to go all the way to the chair or the couch. And exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. Okay, nice and slow and controlled. And I'm that's glad it. you said couch. I mean, I think about if you're watching a show, even with your family, you could take a break. Or when it's doing exactly. the countdown to the next episode, you could pause for just a moment right. and do a couple of quick do moves. Do some push-ups and there you go. Yeah. Everything that you're showing us reminds me we don't always need a grand gesture to make progress. Sometimes it's really about building momentum. I mean, right. how do you help people get into a new habit of moving, even if they have no movement in their day at all right now? Yeah, just do something like this. Just do even a couple minutes. If you go, out, go outside and walk for a couple of minutes, that's better than nothing. Hybrid work. Employees want it, employers need it, and everyone has questions. When done right, facilitating flexible work can be a win-win for everyone. Happier employees, engaged teams, and better business outcomes. Robin is here to make the logistics easy. Our all-in-one workplace experience platform helps thousands of companies reimagine their approach to work. To learn more about how we make hybrid work work, visit RobinPowered.com. 
All right. Well, I'm going to well, try have you some try them. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to school when you had to take the presidential fitness test. So I, I hope I pass. Is there a failing, is there a failing grade on chair? I, I'm making a mental quiz here for you. All right. All right. So, so how's my form here? Very okay. good. Hands flat on the chair. Okay. Exactly. Wow. Let's move your feet back just a little bit. Okay. Because I want your, and let's bring your hips down just a little bit as well. There we go. All right. So we want to have everything in line as you go down because a push-up is essentially a moving plank. And is it elbows in or elbows out when I do this push-up? I always tell people about 45 degrees. So we're not going to be out here. Okay. And we're not going to be totally in like that as well. So about 45 degrees. All right. We'll give it a try here. There we go. And should I breathe in or out as I'm going down? In on the way down, out on the way up. Perfect. Okay. Keeping everything in line. Beautiful. There we go. Love it. You know, what's interesting is that actually helped my back. Now, is that because I'm using more of my core or what, what's the connection? It's probably just getting some blood flow. Getting your to blood that. flowing. It's amazing. Yes. That will do for I know. you. All right. Mo movement helps a lot of your normal aches and pains, especially from, you know, sitting all day at your desk at home. Just getting up and moving can help a lot of those aches and pains. Speaking of being on the move, Monica is becoming a personal trainer as her side hustle. And I hear this from so many people right now, the trend toward keeping that day job and doing it well and finding something else that's in alignment with your purpose, your passion and your path. So how did you choose personal training and how are you fitting this in to your already <laughs> full life of family and enjoying concerts and having a full-time yes. day job as a commodities yes. worker? How are you finding or making space for what matters to you, this, this fitness coaching opportunity. Yeah. Well, I've always loved being at the gym and I decided since that is where my passion lies, why not make that a side hustle as well? So thankfully I do have enough time on weekends and evenings to fit that into my schedule. So it has been challenging, but it's something I love doing. So it doesn't feel like that much of a challenge and it's not, it doesn't really feel like work. Speaking of not feeling like much of a challenge, do you have one more exercise that you can show us? So far, I'm making sure. it through the workout. I mean, I think my egg roll might need a little practice on the roll, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I'll tighten it up yes, over time. We've got, right? a, we've got a few more moves for you. So let's show me what you've got. Okay. So I'm going to have you stand back there as well. This one is going to be a reverse lunge with a twist. So again, we're going to get some of that rotation going and we're going to, instead of just staying in one spot, we're going to be moving backwards. So we're going to stand with our feet about shoulder width apart and hands are going to be up. And once again, one leg is going to be going back. So step back with the left and we're going to twist with your left elbow towards your right knee and then come back up. Same thing, left foot back, left elbow towards the right knee and then back up. And then you'll do about five to six per leg. And you'll really feel that on the backside as well as getting some rotation through your through your core. Now I have to tell you, as I'm watching these moves get a little bit more complex, I feel kind of intimidated. And I'm sure some, some folks at home are thinking that too. You know, they might think about hiring a personal coach, but they stop just short of doing it because they might not be perfect. Exactly. What advice exactly. would you have to offer? What have you discovered about perfection? Yeah. Well, I'm a per perfectionist myself. So I just want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and you don't need to get in shape before hiring a trainer. I think that's a really, really big myth in the industry is that, you know, everybody starts from different places and I work with all different types of people. So I tell people I'm really willing to meet them where they're at and start from there. So, so what I'm hearing you say is a great coach will help you start with where you are and work with what you have. Exactly. Yes. All right. Well, speaking of which, I think I've got we'll to start this. with where I am on this. You called it a reverse lunge. <laughs> a reverse lunge, lunge with okay. a twist. Yes. All right. So I lunge first, correct? Correct. Lunge right, back. So I'm going down and then I'm twisting. You're twisting. Direction. Yes, exactly. Okay. And do the same side again, right? Yes. All right. We'll stay on that side for about five to six reps and then you can switch to the other side. I won't make you do all those reps. I appreciate that, That's but good. I can feel this in my quad, actually. Yes, you're going to get some leg workout. You should feel your glutes, feel your core when you're twisting. All right. Boy, I wish I had a there Fitbit on right now capturing all this activity. But, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Hopefully, hopefully mine is picking my, my activity up, too. Very nice. And you want to make sure you're keeping the, the front toe down 
on the leg that is staying stationary. Oh, okay. So this, this way? Yep. See how your toe just kind of wiggled up there a little bit? Okay. Yes. Make sure you keep the toe down. And see, this is there what's helpful about a coach. Another set of eyes and ears to, to make sure that we correct our form and also look right. in the direction of how do we make this easier because yes. when we're doing a, a right workout the wrong way, we may not always get the benefit. Right, right. And then there's more susceptible to injury, um, all kinds of things. So just, yeah, having that second set of eyes is really, really helpful. And it just makes you not have to think about so many things when you're doing it. Like, am I doing the right exercise? Am I doing it the right way? What exercise should I be doing next? That's where we can all, you know, have, uh, have help with our coach. Well, and do you have one more activity or exercise you can show us? Yes, I do. We're, I'm going to have you stand back off the mat okay. again because we're going to get down it's on the floor. It's interactive. It's going to get exciting. Yes. Oh, boy. So we're getting down back on the mat. Okay. And this is called a glute bridge. So what you're going to do is lay down with your knees bent. And then I'm going to have you put your hands at about a 45 degree angle to the side. And I want you to keep the palms up. Okay. So what that does is that focuses the muscle activity in the lower half of your body. Rather than if you had your palms down, that's gonna be help pushing up. I want it to all come from your lower body. So palms up and you're going to tuck your hips and peel your hips off the ground slowly and do your glute bridge and squeeze, hold for one or two seconds at the top and slowly lower back down. So if you can see, tucking my hips is just a little bit because right here, my lower back is not touching the ground. Okay, yeah. So let's tuck our hips and you can see where that space goes away. And then you're raising with your glutes, squeezing at the top and coming back down slowly. So we can do five to six of those and get a little, little, little bit of glute action in there. All right. Well, what I appreciate that you called out is micro moves matter. Sometimes even a small adjustment can lead to big results. I mean, I know exactly when I watch a recording of myself doing a presentation, I notice when I look off the camera or we all notice when we're talking to someone and they look away and yes. you know, here it's a small move can give right. you noticeable results. And this is another thing as well, since you mentioned your back pain, this, you don't want to overextend at the top of the glute bridge. So only go as far as is comfortable. And by starting with that tuck of your hips first, that's going to make sure that your back doesn't get overextended and you don't aggravate that back pain. Listen to your body. <laughs> yes. Nice, right? Let's have you try a couple. Okay. So here we go. So you said feet hip distance apart. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And, then and you want to kind of bring your heels. Let's bring your heels back in a little bit closer to your butt. Okay. There we go. And you said hands down. Palms facing oh, up. Palms <laughs> again. Okay. Palms so facing palms up, up and arms out from your side about 45 degrees. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to watch and see you do this little tuck. Okay. There we go. And round up a little bit at a time. Yes, exactly. Squeeze at the top. Okay. And you said take a couple breaths, right? One to two second squeeze at the top and then you're good and then you can come back down. What happens when you hold at the top? Are we strengthening a muscle? I notice I feel it. That would be, hopefully you're feeling it squeezing your glutes. Glutes and also yes. a little bit in my quads. Is that sure. I'm doing it wrong if I'm feeling it in my quads? No, too? you can okay. be feeling it a lot of different places. I just don't want you feeling it in your back. So make sure you tuck your hips before you come okay. off the ground. There we go. Right, exactly. And see when she's in the top position here, her whole body is in a line from her shoulders to her knee. That's how you know she's not overextending and that's gonna protect your back. And actually I feel everything kind of opening up across my hip flexors. Sure. And, um, I, I, I also feel like I'm lifting myself up with this small move, <laughs> I guess I, I literally am, okay. And that's gonna help, you know, from sitting all day in a chair. Yes. That's definitely, like you said, that's gonna open that up and kind of give you that nice stretch there. So let's do one more. Okay. Here we go. Good tuck. Very nice. Very nice. You felt that in your glutes, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> and in my quads. And I can also feel some of that pain release a little bit. And I think it's, you know, counterbalancing your activities, right? Mm -hmm. You can't use the same muscle in the same way all day long and expect right. to get results. Right, exactly. And so many times when people work out, we're using the front side of our bodies. And a lot of times we don't focus on the back side. 
So that's why we did the reverse lunges and the glute bridge to focus on that backside and that will help from sitting all day as well. Well, there are so many people who are thinking about how to go from sedentary to getting back to moving again, or you know, maybe thinking about that beach body for the summer. What right. advice would you have to offer for people who are struggling to get started? I would say just start right now. That's all you've got to do is take one small step. Literally, that could be putting on your workout clothes. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to go anywhere. Just put on your workout clothes. Do that for a couple days in a row. And next, maybe you, get in, you go sit in your car. You take really tiny steps. And maybe one day you go to the gym and you just walk around, look at it, and then you leave. And then you just kind of keep building those habits Maybe the next day you go and you walk on the treadmill for five minutes and that's all you need to do. Five minutes at a time. Getting fit, changing your life is as simple as the next choice you make and the next thought that you have. And Monica, when I think about what's possible, what's your greatest wish or hope or aspiration for what will come from helping people get healthy? I just want people to know that they don't have to live in pain and discomfort or just feeling fatigued and low energy all the time. And that just a little bit of movement every day can really be helpful. And it will, it will stretch to so many other areas of your life. It will give you confidence. You might, you might feel like eating better. You might choose that salad over that hamburger. So things like that, it'll just bleed into so many other areas of your life. Hard is a habit and easier is a choice. And what I appreciate about Monica's advice is we can always choose differently. Think big, act small means taking one simple step. Put on your workout clothes, see how that feels. Get in your car, stand on the treadmill without even moving for just a couple of minutes. And it might surprise you to discover that even a 1% daily improvement in your activity level will more than double your impact in 72 days. Think ahead, how would that feel? to be 72 days closer to feeling fit, healthy, and well. Monica, thanks so much for being my Thank fitness you. coach today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. Well, a coach makes all the difference, whether that's in your career or in your personal wellness and well-being. <laughs> having another set of eyes and ears is helpful, but more importantly, coaches are skilled at bringing out the best in you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Karen.